um, if you don't have a kind of a core um, to work with, it's mm -hmm. very, very difficult to um, uh, make progress or even um, provide an environment in which people can all come to an agreement about something. And one of the things that I found that, I mean, Chris, uh, he put uh, feeling and sort of like a desire to have uh, natural, harmonious, you know, living um, uh, things uh, come from your efforts. Um, putting that, that sort of feeling in the center of your work, put the quality stuff right in the middle of what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, you actually get the coherence out of the fact that if the core parts resonate with you in terms of their meaning and their value, then you can say, okay, but we also have to do all these 10 complicated things in order to get there. Right. But if they're driven by the, the human thing that you care about, then it's much easier to sort of uh, figure out kind of how to prioritize and sequence all the different things you have to do. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely imperative because it's only the intuition that can, that can go to the whole. I mean, th because always the issue is, well, what is imbalance and what is, what is the real holistic situation? Right. If if you uh, attach your thought or your comment to some specialty, it's inevitably going to be unbalanced. I mean, um, the intuitive approach that, that, that I very strongly believe in, stand for, in effect takes the emotional life of children, the, the feelings of an old person walking up and down the street, uh, the atmosphere surrounding somebody who's buying a pound of tomatoes, uh, along with getting on and off the bus and the exhaust from the bus, and is the bus going to go around the corner, and how much noise is the train making? I mean, all and all of you know when you deal with, with the thing as in terms of well, how, what, what is substantially help it, helpful to life in that spot? You can actually deal with all of it at once. Whereas if you become too analytical, the chances are that you're going to get onto some technical hobby horse, which is going to swamp all the other stuff and blot it out. But the main point is that you're going to be operating with a distorted picture, um, you know, so that it's because it's inaccurate that I don't like these technical things, because they're very inaccurate. They, they tend to distort. But, uh, but the key point is that when you operate with those kind of feelings, that it tends to include questions of economic development, questions of traffic safety, and so forth. In other words, it's not, I mean, and here we're getting into something potentially controversial, but I'm telling you my opinion. Um, it, it, it is, you can't have good feelings about something that is a major traffic hazard. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you operate on the level of feeling, you're, you're already including some of these other problems economic problems, technical problems, transportation problems, and so forth. So, so actually, the, your feelings tend to deal with the whole in a rather balanced way. They, they may be inaccurate because of ig your ignorance about something or other, but it tends to be more balanced. Oh, well, the crux of my, all my claims is that actually they, they all feel essentially the same, with, with, with the variation being relatively on the order of 10%, not 90%. Do you see what I mean? Because the, 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 the myth that's being propagated is that actually everybody feels different, um, and that the and that the, the, the communality is on the order of ten percent, and the variation is on the order of ninety, right? And I completely, I, I think that's simply not so factually. Um, I mean, in in an American Indian community, people don't feel that way. I mean, in a traditional one, um, these sort of feelings that I'm talking about are actually the major common coin of public discourse. You know, so it's just a social situation that we're in. So that's that's what beautiful software is. We're trying to get people to to uh, take the building beauty course, um, study the nature of order with us as they build something, and uh -huh. um, and then at, on the side we're going to build some software so that we can apply it directly to um, the software that we're building, and 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 then there will be consequences I think for the software world. That is what I call the beautiful software thesis. That is, computer people have been inspired by the ideas found in the writings of Christopher Alexander for six decades. 
perhaps if computer people studied the material in its original context regarding the built environment with Alexander's students and colleagues, there'd be an authentic revolutionary transfer of these ideas into the world of engineering and computing. But why would that be true? It's kind of hard for people to really come to it without getting involved in a physical project. In other words, you can, mm. I think everyone uses it to some degree, this, this sort of central uh, sort of, oh, that feels good, or oh, that doesn't feel good. Not, not do you like it or not, but does, do, does, it, does it actually make you feel more like a human being? Does you, does, do you genuinely feel comfortable with it? Do you think it really is a sort of, uh, has elegance and finesse, but also simplicity and, and a lot of other sort of properties that just resonate with you and make you feel more, more wonderful, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and healthier and all these other sorts of things. Speaking this way explicitly, is unusual in the computer industry. Putting those things in the center of what you're doing as a as an engineer and as a as a creator of uh, things for people is something that we have found. Um, if you're building real stuff and you're familiar with building real stuff with those things in mind, somehow it just gives you more of a, a kind of a better wellspring. if the core parts resonate with you in terms of their meaning and their value, then you can say, okay, but we also have to do all these 10 complicated things in order to get there. Right. But if they're driven by the, the human thing that you care about, then it's much easier to sort of uh, figure out kind of how to prioritize and sequence all the different things you have to do. Yeah. And this, and this, I, I, th I feel this happens in, in good building all the time. There's my favorite cafe during the dot com boom in downtown Palo Alto. It was, a, it was a very badly named university coffee cafe sort of redundant and it was and but they had <laughs> they, they had done something they had decided to open up it was it was something anyone who was down there at the time will remember it because it kind of spilled out onto the street it was a very mm. very big sort of uh, uh, inner uh, uh, sort of uh, inner cafe table area and a and a uh, and a, a series of op uh, doors that opened up as much as you needed them uh, sort of fanfold doors and all the way to the edge of the space and um, which allowed the tables to sort of like basically be half inside and half outside and it was mm -hmm. really and it was very inviting and very very nice but you know sitting there for, for a while you know you realize that that's not how the the building was built it was like more like a um you know kind of like a something else there was, was probably a livery store a lighting store or something like that beforehand and and so in order to do that make that nice sort of transition happen they had to put in this tremendous beamwork um, that actually supported the the two stories of windows that were above it in the space, mm -hmm. which was quite high. Mm -hmm. And and I thought, well, oh, in were... order to knock in order to knock out the space underneath that's, the window that's, so that that's it could right. bend out. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's like someone realized how important it was for a cafe to be able to spill out on a street um, enough to say you know we've got to spend half our budget on on uh, on on making this possible you know and that's I a thought, great example um then not only that but someone had to make the case for that yeah people and 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 uh, and was able to to people probably who understood the human problem I, I thought it was really interesting to um, immerse myself in uh, this this world of the nature of water and this community of mostly architects and builders. Um, and I think it was very useful to have these conversations with uh, with many people who are very familiar with Alexander's work from from the architecture perspective. And I don't know if there is any other way than um, starting from that angle, because that is where all this originated from. And there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to really, I think, uh, make a good connection between the, the software world and Alexander. Like forgotten all of the, the like frustrating parts now. I'm like, that was just awesome. But I, you know, I think for me, like 
I really enjoyed like the organization of the course, you know, I think studio, nature of order, appropriate construction software, they all brought like such different but valuable things to the experience. Like I we were talking about this um, in the software class about like how programmers can get more integrated. I still think the high expectations are super valuable because, you know, like, the reason I think I enjoyed this so much was it that it was really serious. You know, I don't think um, like a dumbing down or, you know, lower expectations would necessarily be a good thing, but equally, you know, like it is, it was pretty stressful as well to try and do everything in the right time scales. Little details of different things. They all just like, every, everyone's approaches are so different. Everyone's uh, philosophy is so different. And yet something uh, at the very base is uh, very much the same. How could those these processes and principles be applied to the software world? And I realized that like a lot of these processes are already used in the software world, but like the core values are usually not there of like values of creating beauty and life in the world. So in my alternative timeline, if we had the Building Beauty core course in 1996 to offer to the thousands of computer people who were excited by Christopher Alexander's ideas about building good things, the world might be very different today.